phones out and let's take some notes in. I'm going to be speaking this morning on allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you in your everyday life. Allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you in your everyday life. My God. This is Pentecost Sunday. I'm going to just read you what Pentecost Sunday is all about. Pentecost Sunday is the Christian Holy Day of Pentecost, which is celebrated on the seventh Sunday after Easter. It commemorates the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and other followers of Jesus Christ while they were in Jerusalem celebrating the Feast of Weeks, as described in the Acts of the Apostle, which is Acts the second chapter, verses 1 through 31. And the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. There's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Let me tell you something. Our churches would be pretty boring and pretty dead without the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all not saying nothing. So most times, I'm sad to say it, but it's the truth. Most times, if you're in a dry, dead church, that means the Holy Spirit really ain't moving. Y'all not saying nothing. They ain't activating them. I tell you, when, when, the Holy Spirit, it's like you have a good meal, I'm going to mess with some food for you. You ever have like, some good, a good meal when I used to eat pork chops? Or some stewed chicken or something. But you know, that could be good. But then uh, the Holy Spirit is like the gravy. Y'all not saying nothing. You know, you can have a good meal, but Pastor Faye, you... The Holy Spirit is like the gravy. Y'all got quiet. That's me and the Pastor Faye's little joke. Her little niece, I gotta tell y'all, this is so funny. Her little niece or whatever, she was a little baby. So whenever they would be eating, the little girl would just go like this. <laughs> that means I want some. <laughs> I can't talk, but you eating that. I want some. I don't know what to say, but I can put my face together so you can give me some. <laughs> so every now and then I do that to pass the fan. She just started laughing. Y'all know we greedy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But the Holy Spirit is like the gravy. Maybe you went to church, you, you were going to go to church, maybe maybe you get up in the morning and you feel a little blah, and you feel like, you, you feel a little dry, and you're like, oh, I'm going to go to church, and then you go to church, and then you hit the church, and, and just something moves you and stirs you. It ain't because you came to church, it's because the Holy Spirit is moving. Amen. Now, if you go to church and fall asleep and take a nap, time out, Amen. ain't too much going on. Come on. Some churches you go to, when the Word of God comes up, there's everybody's nap. You need to have ushers to so start handing out pillows and blankets. <laughs> Like you do on the airplane. You, you know what I'm saying? You want to be Sabrina? Amen. Because that's usually nap time. I ain't going to mess with y'all. Amen. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes to refresh us. The Holy Spirit comes to lead us and guide us. And when you when you come into a service and, and you feel conviction or you start crying or, or things that are on you lift, that is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say the Holy Spirit. My girl got her phone. Go ahead, Naomi. She got me on her phone. Amen. So, renewing, I'm sorry, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you in your everyday life. I don't want to teach or preach a message that you can't apply to your life, but we need the Holy Spirit to, to, to speak to us. And most times, I'm going to tell you all, you all know the voice of the Holy Spirit. You just don't know what you're listening to. When you say, oh, you know what, I was going to go this way, but something told me don't go that way. That one knows something. Because it wasn't you, because you ain't that smart. <laughs> When you're going down Route 1 and you're going down the parkway and your foot is a little heavy, 22, wherever you live, and then the Holy Spirit says, slow down. You still listen to your music, still by, slow down. And then you get pulled over, you get made to stop. And you know, you'd be like, something told me to slow down, but you didn't listen. So you won't get a little ticket ministry, now you're going to listen to the voice. So most times we know the voice, but we don't heed to the voice. Or when some of your kids tell you something, but what they tell you don't really rest in your spirit. And the Holy Spirit said, they lying through their teeth. This. Oh, ah. yeah. Or somebody hug you and say, oh, I just love you to love the Lord. And you just feel the knives coming all in your back. You're like, somebody please take the knife out my back. Y'all not saying nothing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit letting you know. Amen. Amen. Acts 2, 1, 4 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as they were rushing mighty women and filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what we want to be filled. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. I love this Acts 1 and 8. It says, But ye shall receive power. Say power. Power. 
after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. So, and, and my theme scripture for our time for our topic today is Romans eight Romans eight fourteen. It says, "For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God." Let me tell you something. God doesn't just desire to lead the pastors and leaders and those with the title. God desires to lead all of us. He didn't bring you here to to, to live aimlessly on the earth. He desires to lead and guide and speak and direct all of us. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, "He that has ears, not just these outward ears." He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God wants to speak. How many people ha have ever heard the voice of God, didn't know you were hearing the voice of God, but then later on you found, oh, that was really God. Amen? Yeah. yeah. All that's you be all of us in here. Yeah. So I want, I want to give you seven practical ways to be led by the Holy Spirit. Seven practical ways to be led by the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. lead me. Lead me. Guide, me. Guide me. Direct me. Direct me. But most of all, but most of all help, me to be sensitive help me to be sensitive to your voice. Your voice. I'm going to say that again. Help me to be sensitive, me to, be sensitive to, your voice. to your voice. The Holy Spirit is not a loud voice. Most times it's a still, small, gentle voice. And if you don't quiet yourself down, you will miss it. My Lord, amen. It may be something like, do this. Call this one. Watch this. Watch them. Watch him. You know, just little things, but we can miss it being busy. So that's why I played that song, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Yes. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. I'm not just talking about fill the best Western, but fill the place in our hearts. Yes, God. Yes, God. Another part of that song says, let us become more aware of your presence. That's what we want to become as spirit-filled believers. We don't just want to be uh, aware of his presence, Sister Gwen, while we're in church. Right. You need God's presence on your job. You need God's presence in your marriage. You need God's presence in difficult situations. You need the presence of God. Not in here so much because we're only here a short time of the week. You need God's presence in your everyday life. So I'm going to give you seven practical points, seven practical ways to be led by the Holy Spirit. Number one, listen to the voice. The still, small voice. Listen to his nudges, his promptings, and to his conviction. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't condemn you, the Holy Spirit convicts us. Amen. Say convicts us. Convicts us. What will the Holy Spirit say? Let the grudge go. Don't eat that. Don't say that. Don't receive that. Forgive. Walk. Exercise. Love. When it's hard to love, he'll tell you to love. Pray. Help. Forgive. Do what the doctor says. Take your medicine. I'm going to put this in there for the atmosphere. This is free. If you're believing God for healing in your physical body, you still take your medicine in Jesus' name Amen. until the manifestation of healing comes. Amen. When healing comes, the doctor will confirm it and he will pull you off. That's right. That's right. That's right. Pastor Matt blessed me a few weeks ago. We went out and I want to keep it like that. Pastor Matt told me and I wasn't asking him. He just said it. He said, Pastor Mark, one thing I like about your ministry is that it's balanced. And I said, I pray that we keep it balanced in Jesus' name. A lot of people have died before that time because they didn't move in the right realm. Now, we believe God for healing, but let me tell you something. Healing can come through pills. Healing can come through the doctors. Healing can come supernaturally. But if it doesn't come supernaturally and you have to take medication, you take your medicine in Jesus' name. You take it on time and take it the way the doctors told you to take it. You don't pull. You ain't no physician. You don't pull yourself off of medication if you need it. Amen. 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 So the Holy Spirit, you listen to the voice, move, act, and trust. You have to listen. You got to quiet yourself down, Sister Dawn, to listen to the voice of God. Amen. Let me tell you something. If we listen to the voice of God, we might not understand everything, but the Holy Spirit, you'll never be let off track. Amen. Amen. 
You'll never be, you might not know everything, but you'll never be let off track because you got to stay sensitive. You got to stay in sync with God. And you got to stay in sync with God more than just Sunday morning and Saturday night. You got to stay in sync with God 24 7. Amen. Listen for his voice. Listen to new ways he speaks. Listen to the things he's trying to show you. If you see your kids that are one, they may be full of joy, but then you see their mood shift. That's right. Amen. You like they down in the dumps. You're like, oh, ain't nothing wrong with them. You better be sensitive and see what's wrong with them, your kids. As mothers and fathers and grandparents and, and just Amen. seers, you better see what's going on. Amen. Amen. Too much stuff happening quick. That's right. That's right about that. How are we spirit-filled, born again, tongue talking, shouting, running around the church people, and then we don't know what's going on in our house. Amen. We don't know what's going on with our kids. We don't know what's going on. We just don't know. Right. We're just somewhere washing dishes, singing in the spirit, and you're not aware of your your atmosphere. Amen. So number two, listen to the voice, the still, small voice of God. Number two, don't question the voice, follow the voice. Don't question the voice, follow the voice. And some of you in here, I know that you are very sharp and very keen. People that walk with me, people, I, I know that it just you just need to know what you see and listen to. And some people come to me and say, oh, Pastor Mark, I see so-and-so and so-and-so. But it may just be me. I said, no, it ain't you. I, I know that you see. You have wisdom and that you see. You all have wisdom. You seek things. And let me tell you something. When you see, let me tell you, I, I, I saw something uh, during last last night, and I just saw something, something I had sensed already. But sometimes it takes other people a while to sense it. But let me tell you something. When God showed me something, I stick to what he showed me. I don't care who ran and raved, who does think you wonderful, who think you the best thing uh, since sliced bread. If I see something else, I, I don't run my mouth and say it, but I hold on to it. And let me tell you something. What I saw, it revealed itself on last night. It doesn't mean the person's bad. It just means it's just too much flesh. Yes, yes. Doesn't mean you're not saved. It just means mm -mm, everything, everything ain't adding up. Two plus two ain't adding up to four. There's a problem. Let me tell you something. When you see something, you stick to what God shows you. Amen. I don't care if nine people say, oh, I don't see. Oh, I don't think that. You, if, if you feel a check in your spirit, hold on. Because let me tell you something. If it's God, it will reveal itself. You might have to wait a little while for it to be known and seen. But I, I hold on. I've learned as a mature Christian that God, I hold on to what God shows me. Amen. Praise Amen. Lord. Amen. Hold on to what God shows you. Write it down in a journal. Because let me tell you, when God shows you something and God reveals something to you, God will, let me tell you, it's in my notes, God will bring it to you and he'll confirm it. Yes. You ain't got to go around asking, I ain't got to ask nobody. Do you see what I, I ain't got to ask you because it's going to reveal itself. It's going to unravel itself most times right before your eyes. Right. That's good. This is some good teaching. I'm going to get my own CD. Amen. <laughs> Number two, don't question the voice, follow the voice. And when he shows you things, pray into them. Take them before the Lord and pray, man. Okay, number three, measure the voice to the word. Measure the voice. If, if the Lord tells you to give, most times it's God telling you to give because God's a giver. If God tells you to sow, that's most of the times it's, it's God because God's a sower. If God tells you to bless somebody, God's a blesser. If you hear the word steal, no. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Gwen. I know you're awake. If you hear the word steal, steal. don't steal. That's not God because the devil is a thief. Right. I'm just teaching you how you hear the voice of God because there's a lot of voices. But the word says, my sheep know my voice right. and the voice of a stranger, the foreign voices we won't eat to or listen to. If you hear the voice to tell you to lie, I'm just going to keep my head down in the paper. <laughs> Let me just drink some water past the mat. If you hear voices lie, don't lie because the devil is a liar. Right. So when you hear voices, you measure it to the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's how you know. If you hear the voices say, you know what, I need, to, I need to get off of Facebook. I need to pray. Let me yeah. just get on my knees and pray. That's God. Amen. Break it down. Amen. If he tells you to fast... You know that's God because you know we like to eat up everything. So you know that's God telling you. The devil showing you. You know that if you hear that voice, I need to fast for two days and just get some things in order. You know that's God. You know it ain't you. Because we like to eat, amen? I'm putting myself in the equation. Okay, number four. This is so good. Stick to what you see or sense, even if what, even if it goes against what others see or say. Stick to what you see and sense. Say, Lord, help me to stick with what I see and what I sense. 
And I'm not saying what you see or says. You got to go tell the whole world what you see or says. Keep it to yourself. Write it down. Because let me tell you something. It will reveal. How many people you saw some things or, or you sent some things and then later on what you saw said you be like, Come on. Dog, the devil ain't alive. Let me tell you something. His sheep know his voice. And you may think, oh, I don't hear from God. Because you know, I, I, ain't, I, I do this and I do that. It don't matter. Let me tell you something. We, we are what we are by the grace of God. Amen. I'm not a pastor because I cross every T and dot every I. I'm a pastor because I'm obedient to the, to the voice of God. Right. And I do what it is that God has called and commissioned me to do. Amen. 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 And his blood perfects me. Hallelujah. It's in him that I live and move and have my being. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Washing the blood. And let me tell you something. In order for you to really do what God wants you to do, you got to know who you are in him. That's right. you got to stand flat-footed. Now, I know who you are in yourself. I know who I am in God. And I ain't got to boast. I ain't got to pass out no business cards saying I'm prophet so-and-so from <laughs> Rome, New Jersey. You just walk in what you walk in. Let me tell you something. When you walk in your authority, others will tell you who you are. Others will, will see the gift. I ain't got to walk around passing out business. I ain't got to call, walk around talking about can you get me to speak? Uh -uh. Your gift. Will make room for you yeah, and bring you before great kings. Come on, thank you. I don't have to self-promote myself. Because right. if you try to open the door, you got to keep it open. Yeah. You got to keep it going. When God opens the door, you can sit back because God's got you. Thank you. Give God a hand of praise. Yeah. Stick to what you see or sense, even if it goes against what others see or say. And when I say this, I'm saying don't be from the granola ministry. Flaky, fruity, and nutty. Be balanced. Don't be talking about something strange or way off the wall, way out of God mess that you've seen because you had a bad dream, ate too much. <laughs> Let what you see in a sense line up with the word of God. Let it not be so uh, granola-ish, if I can. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. All right. I, don't, I ain't going to linger there. I can say that for a minute. But number five. So number five is allow the Holy Spirit. This is so good. I've had this happen in my life time and time again. Allow the Holy Spirit to confirm. You don't have to ask someone to confirm it. God will bring the confirmation to you. Let me tell you something. If there's something you need to find out, Sister Rita, if there's something you need to know, let me tell you something. You ain't got to go hunting. You ain't got to drive around town. You ain't got to be playing Inspector Gadget. You ain't got to put on a wig and eyeglasses and try to disguise yourself. Let me tell you something. When, when, when what you see and what you sense is from God, God will bring the information to your door. He'll bring it to your phone. He'll bring it through a stranger. People will just open up and just tell you stuff. And you will never even know why they're telling you stuff because you need to know it. And you ain't got to go searching and looking and driving and getting uh, binoculars, being in people's driveways. Allow the Holy Spirit to confirm. You don't have to ask someone to confirm it. God will bring the confirmation to you. Just like he did to me last night. Something I've been seeing for a minute. And he brought the confirmation right before my eyes and right before someone else's eyes. And I have to go say, see, I told you that I have been sore. Stick to what you see and what you sense. This is some good teaching. I think I better fly out to Dallas today and maybe go sit with the bishop and see. See if, see if he have need of me in Dallas. Amen. <laughs> Love you, Bishop Jakes. Amen. Amen. Number six. I'm going mean, you to put yourself in a prophetic atmosphere. That's right. Amen. Call those things that be not as though they were. Amen. Number six. Don't lean on your own understanding when the Holy Spirit speaks. So Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Sometimes you got to step out and find out. Don't lean on your own understanding when the Holy Spirit speaks. And number seven, I'm going to go read it again just for you real quick. But number seven, get around other anointed, unoffended leaders that have your back and will encourage and support you after you have heard from the Holy Spirit. That's so good. That is so good. Let's go back because there's some key words in here. Be around, get around, stay around. Let that be your... Uh, your, your base, let that be your group. Get around an other anointed, unoffended leaders. Everybody shout unoffended leaders. What do you mean, Pastor Mark? If you got if, if you have a leader, whether it's man or female, and they got a problem with women in the ministry, y'all ain't going too far as women. If you got a leader, I don't believe the Lord, call women to preach. 
and you sitting there and you got a good preacher teaching anointing, you ain't going across the street. Y'all got quiet. You'll be taking that, that gift to the grave if you don't move. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. So we have to get around other anointed, unoffended leaders that have your back. Say, have my back. Have Not my stab back. your back. But have your back. Right. And will encourage and support you after you have heard from the Holy Spirit. Proverbs eleven fourteen says, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counsels, there is safety. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen? So I'm going to go over those real quick. And then I'm going to move on. Number one, listen to the voice, the still, small voice. Seven practical ways to be led by the Holy Spirit. Listen to the voice, the still, small voice. Number two, don't question the voice, follow the voice. Number three, measure the voice to the word. What you hear, measure it to the word. Let the word be your barometer. That's how you measure it. Amen? Amen. Number four, stick to what you see or sense, even if it goes against what others see or say. Amen? Number five, allow the Holy Spirit to confirm. You don't have to uh, ask someone to confirm it. God will bring the confirmation to you. Number six, don't lean on your own understanding when the Holy Spirit speaks. Step out and find out. Lean not to your own understanding. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit will speak some things and it'll be like, it'll try to mess you up. Amen. You'll be like, where's this? So write it down, pray into it, see, see what God is saying. Amen? Amen. Number seven, get around other anointed, unoffended leaders or friends, or people that have your back. Amen? People that believe in you, that love you, support you, will pray for you, not not support you in your face and talk about you as soon as you leave. Child, you know what Beverly talking about? She want to do, she talking about, she want You know, that's the craziest thing I've heard in my life. She said, what? Yeah, child, I, you know, I both thought she was a little off or something. You know, she be dancing, I playing I thought she was a little off. Get around other anointed, unoffended leaders and friends, family members Amen. that will have your back and encourage you and support you after you have heard from the Holy Spirit. Amen? And I want to close with this. This was so good. Paulette said this over the weekend at Blessing. I want to bring it to you all. She said, when God told you or the Holy Spirit leads you to do something, why are you praying about it? If he told you to do it, then you do it. If God told you, Pastor Faye, that you're to take global companies, north, south, east, and west, and you're to have youth prayer summits and uh, uh, prayer summits to engage the young people in prayer and engage uh, grown people in prayer, and you're to take it around the world and, and just encourage people to, to know God in prayer life, why are you spending 40 days fasting and praying about what God told you? Mm -hmm. That's good. Let me take a sip. If God told you to bless Pastor Mark and just give him $1,000, please don't pray about it. Please just come find where I'm at. <laughs> quickly. That's a good prophetic word, uh, Pastor Baby. I knew you were on the front row for a reason. She said, quickly. I need a high five for that one. Thank you. You flowing in the spirit. If God told you you need to shift and be at the hope, this is the place where you need to be covered. This is the place where you're going to grow. This is the place where yokes are going to be destroyed. You're going to be catapulted in your ministry. Why are you praying about it after God gave you the word that this is where you're supposed to be? Now, after you get the word, it's going to be challenges. It's going to be on some, some Sunday mornings. It's going to be cloudy and rainy out at 730 in the morning. And you just want to go to Reverend Pillow's church, to the bedside Baptist Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> Where it's raining and it's cold and you all bundled up and you ain't got to work today. Y'all not saying nothing. Yeah. But you better get up and be where God told you to be. Right. Amen. Amen. So I'm saying that when God tells you to do something, why are you praying about it? After he told you to do it. Now, if you don't know what to do, then you pray. You acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. But after God has given you a word and spoken to you and said, this is what you do, X, Y. I don't have to pray about, should I come to the whole Sunday, Saturday and Sunday to minister? That's my assignment. That's my job. Amen. Whether nobody shows up, I got to do what he called me to do. Amen. Whether the place is packed, I got to do. Because I don't have to pray about, should I go preach and teach the word of God on Saturday and Sunday? Because that's what I'm called to do. He told me that's your assignment. Right. That's what you hear say, do it if every chair is full. Right. Come on. Do it if they leave. Do it if they stay. That's your assignment. So when God tells you to do something, you got to do what God... It's just like us. How many people got kids in here? Got children? You got children? Let me see. Wave your hands if you got some children. Now, when you tell your kids to go clean their room, you don't want to hear them say, I'm going to go pray about it. 
because you're going to be looking for a switch. <laughs> if you tell your kid to take the garbage out, you don't want to say, well, before I take the garbage, let me pray and see if, this, if the Lord really wants me to take this garbage out. Because this garbage stinks, and I really don't like taking the garbage out. So let me just go and pray and go into a time of prayer. So if, if we being natural, we don't want to hear that. How much more being spiritual when God tells you something, or why are you praying about what God told you to do when God told you to do it? Right. You tell your kid to clean your room. You don't say, well, mommy, I, you know, I don't know if that's really God if I should clean my room. <laughs> You be saying, you better pray that I don't pick up something and knock it inside your head. That's what you think you're praying about. <laughs> so I, grew up in, I grew up in a black family. I don't grow up, but I grew up in, you know, they ain't put us in time out. You got a time out. You got a beat down and some time out. You got time out because you were too, you were too slow to move. Time out. <laughs> oh, this, we got some good teaching and laughing over here. Mommy, I don't know. You, I don't know if you heard from God. I gotta pray. I don't know. I wash dishes. I don't like washing no dishes. Child, you didn't even get dish out. You dish on the dig on the floor. Thank you so much. Amen. So that's that's. I'm gonna close with that. When God tells you to do something, you do what God tells you to do. Seven practical ways to be led by the Spirit of God. I'm done. God bless you, Facebook family. God bless you, YouTube. Let's give God a hand of praise all over the building.